Okay, adventurers. <sighs> I'm super excited because today we are going on an adventure of a different kind. You know, along the way, I have changed a lot of things on the van. And one of the things that I wanted to do before I did my full van tour was install this last item. It's something that I have been going back and forth with myself on because I had a couple of different ideas as to what I wanted to do, but I finally determined that this was going to be the most useful for the time being. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and bite the bullet and do it. It's something that I put a lot of thought into for the last calendar year. Year, almost one year in fact I have been considering this idea and I've gone back and forth between brands styles types function other things that I want to do but ultimately I decided that this was the thing that could make everything possible for me for a while so finally it's just time and I have determined that this is going to be the best fit for me personally and I hope that it'll improve our adventures going forward in a variety of different ways so Baz Pro, here we come. Okay guys, we have made it here and now it is time to pick up what I've been waiting for. This is gonna be fun, but while we're here also, I'm gonna look for a couple of other things. So let's go shopping at Bass Pro. Okay, so Bass Pro is always fun to explore. I definitely encourage you guys to go check out my video of the largest Bass Pro, which is in Springfield. It's really awesome to see, but I think I'm gonna look to see if they have some mountain house here before we start our adventures of uh, finding this larger mod for my van. So in we go. Okay guys, I was gonna pick up some Mountain House, but they don't have the flavor that I'm looking for, but they do have some other good flavors. So I guess I'll just have to wait for the restock. Since they don't have that, let's go look around at a few other things. You never know what you need. I have been looking at maybe getting one of these. I was hoping that they might have one of the Sawyer ones because I like Sawyer as a brand, but it looks like they only have these right now. They do have this one, but this is not the one I was looking for, so we'll probably just wait on a water bottle. I'm gonna try to pick up one of these because I have not tried these no rinse products before. I do use bath cloths and it doesn't look like they have those here, but I would like to try these because they have a body and a shampoo. So these are great for backpacking. So let's pick up one of each of these today. Okay, since Bass Pro's so big, I didn't know where I was going, so I have to go to the marine area here. So um, here we go. Now, one of these would be super fun for van life, but um, don't think that's in my budget today. <laughs> Ooh, yes, this is so awesome. This would be super fun. But again, not, not what we're here for. Although, with some J-Racks, maybe, maybe in the future. Also fun, also not what we're here for. I just need to find an employee, I think, because I don't really know what I'm looking for. Now that guy would be fun, that would be super fun. Maybe on a future adventure we can go on a boat. Ooh, that'd be cool. Guys, I found it, I found it. Guess what's coming home with us today? A roof box. Yeah, we're getting a roof box. But now I have to figure out how to get said roof box. Okay, next challenge. Now this is the 18 cubic foot Cabela's labeled roof box. And um, you can see it's, it's a little bit larger than this one, but that's going to carry a lot of stuff. And I think the measurements that I looked at are perfect for some of my bigger items. Now, if you're interested in a roof box, I'm gonna leave the uh, information right here, the screenshot of the actual Cabela's site so you can see that. And um, yeah, now we just have to find somebody to help us because the thing's big and um, it's not gonna fit in a regular cart. And well, I don't actually see boxes of them, so I think we're gonna have to have somebody bring it out to us. So uh, that's our next step, finding someone in this area. Okay, so I found someone, and um, they're going to go and check in the back to see if 
I need to just drive around to the area. I'm not sure yet, so we'll find out very soon, but then we get to take it back to base camp and install it, which is gonna be super, super fun. But um, in the meantime, I get to look some more at these uh, canoes and kayaks and uh, have some more pipe dreams because eventually I would like to do that too because I really enjoy doing this. Ooh, paddle boards though. That would be super fun. And actually, some of my mountain house friends were telling me that they really enjoy paddle boarding. Seeing one of these up close, I feel a little bit more confident because it's pretty wide. And so that is a little bit more attainable than what I was thinking it was. I was thinking it was more narrow. Ooh, they have a paddle boat. Fun fact, whenever I was young, my dad actually had a paddle boat and we would take it out and we'd go fishing off of it. You know, it's really dangerous to come into a place like this whenever you like the outdoors because you never know what you're gonna find. I limited myself in the camping section to only these things because I came in with a very specific idea as to what I needed, but just standing here, the longer I stand, the more I want, and the more I want, the longer my list grows, and the longer my list grows, well, possibly more projects in the future, but at least I'm focused on the fact that I have to carry this home and I only have a certain amount of room in my van. now. To be able to come and pick this up, I had to take a bunch of stuff out of the van so that I could fit it back into the van so I could take it home. And um, looking at it now, it, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. This could be interesting still. You can see here, it's 57 inches long, 39 inches across, and 17.75 inches tall. Okay guys, now we just take this slip up to the front. We pay for it and then we go around to the receiving area. Heat update here in Texas. Good times, good times. You know, realistically being in the Pacific Northwest had me pretty spoiled. And again, you're still seeing videos probably from that trip, but just walking from the inside to the outside, I'm already sweating here. This is miserable. But now we get to go to the back area. That's where we can pick up this thing. And uh, well, let me, let me show you what kind of space that we're working with. I emptied out the front because, well, I thought this could help, but also back here, there's a big space. So maybe we can put it in this section. If not, then it's gonna have to lay across my bed. Now, I honestly thought about just pulling my bed out and then coming and picking it up. That way it would fit very easily, but I just couldn't fathom having to take out everything from my back of my van. That would have meant everything under the bed would have had to come out and then everything on top of the bed would have had to come out. And that was just a lot, it was a lot. So instead, we're gonna figure this out. If that means I have to take it out of the box, We'll do that. It doesn't have to go that far. It just has to be in here so I can get it to base camp so I can install it on top. Whoo, the struggles of a small van sometimes. And the even more fun part of this is that I'm going to be installing this, I'm pretty sure by myself because my dad is not going to be able to help me with this. So cross our fingers that we get this done correctly before I have to take off again. Now, according to this, I go around the building and after I go around the building, I'll pass a series of different points. Okay, he told us it would be after the boat area. Okay, it's past the boat service doors. See, it's right here, package pickup, but someone got the jump on us, so we're in line now, which is fine. We're just gonna cool off for a minute in the van and then, um, yeah, we'll make our move in just a minute to go get this. Now, there are a few things I wanted to talk to you guys about before we start the process of installing it. Again, I've been going over this in my head for about a year and I didn't know for sure which one that I wanted and that's part of what was kind of making me hesitant. But also I was thinking about doing like a roof deck. Now, if you've seen Lady Bug Out's channel, she has a roof deck and I really love it, super love it. But at the same time, I think that this is going to give me a little bit more value at this time. Now, I have a few items that I like to carry with me that I can't necessarily carry with me if I'm carrying other larger items. For example, my carcel. I love my carcel. And if I'm carrying just my carcel, I can totally do that. But if I am carrying my e-bike, I can't carry both of them because it just takes up too much space. And that's not fun because you never know when you wanna just pop up the carcel and have like a grand old time. But 
unfortunately that's not something that I can do if I'm wanting to do both of those things. So I made sure to get a roof box that was large enough that the carcel can fit inside. That way I can take it with me and always have it just in case or I can take it with me when I know I'm going to be staying at a campground for an extended amount of time without having to clutter up my space inside. And also I'm not going to be putting anything of super value up on top of my van. I'm just not going to do it because that's just one more reason for people to be like hey oh you have that up there no everything that's gonna be up there is just gonna be like my extra stuff like my shower tent and my car sole and my recovery boards bulky items that's it now another reason I was wanting to do this is because you might have seen on my channel previously I talked about I want to go to Alaska I still want to do that and I'm thinking about all of the different things that would make that process just a little bit easier and having a roof box definitely would because then I could carry multiple things that I can't necessarily fit into my van that would help me with my preparedness on a larger trip like that. Okay, we're in the bay. I already rang the bell, so now I'm just waiting. Um, I don't know how long this is gonna take, but I hope it's not super long because it is so hot outside. But I have my paperwork, and I went ahead and took my keys out just because, you know, safety. But um, yeah, I'll let you guys know. Can you see it? It's there, it's there, yeah. It, it fit, it, it barely, it barely fit, but it fit. I think you can see though, <laughs> I melted a little bit. Although whenever I got here, this is super light, so I can pick it up myself, but whenever you buy something from Bass Pro, they actually load it for you. And so that was even better because it's kind of just an odd size. So now back to base camp we go. And because we're back in Texas, we have to stop off at Whataburger because um, they have banana shakes right now. And I'm super excited about that banana pudding shake. Yes. Now, if you have never been to Whataburger, Whataburger, whatever you would like to call it, this is a Texas-based restaurant that is fast food, but it is so delightful, and it always makes me so happy to come back because, well, they just have really good stuff, and I really like the fact that they're doing banana pudding shakes right now because that is such a cooling feel after being out in the heat, waiting on that delivery service to come out and, like, help me with the box. So, yeah. It's it's gonna be good now, it's gonna be good. And let me just say, if you know, you know. This place, yummy, yummy, oh yeah. Well guys, I made it back to base camp and you can see there's my parents' van right there. And then here's mine. And so, it's time. It's time to get this guy out. And um, yeah, it's pretty big. In fact, yeah, see? See how big it is? Okay guys, so now that I have it all out of the box, it comes in two pieces. Of course, that piece and this piece were stacked on top of one another. Then here is all of the hardware, including the keys. So I am gonna go ahead and just put this inside the van for safekeeping for the time being so that it doesn't blow away because there's a little bit of a breeze. Okay, and so now that I've put everything inside, let's look inside this first. Because again, before we do any kind of assembly, we wanna make sure that we're doing things correctly. And it does have an area here that says read instructions before assembly or warranty is voided. So I did go ahead and scan through this, but I'm gonna read it a little bit better. This tells us about the components that are inside this bag. All of them appear to be here from my knowledge so far, but I am gonna pull everything out and count it just to make sure and then I wanted to kind of bring your attention to the fact that they not only have visuals here but they're visuals that are very clear and concise even telling us when it is locked versus unlocked so this is extremely user-friendly and so this shouldn't be super super hard to put into place but we shall see Okay, so as we're looking at this, this will be the front side here, and then that will be the back side. This is the bottom piece, and you can see there's already a few pre-drilled holes, but there are some other spaces where if these don't line up that we can pop through with a drill. Now this tiny tag over here says it's not eligible for return once we attempt to install it. So we gotta do this right, guys. Now despite the fact that I am 5'7", and my van is a tiny van, I, even when reaching up like this, don't have the uh, 
the height that I need to do this without some kind of assistance. So I think I'm gonna try a couple different things. One of the things I'm gonna try is a step stool, if that doesn't work, a ladder. This is why I wanted to do this at base camp because I have accessibility to both of those things. Otherwise, I would be just trying to do all this and uh, kind of flying blind because I only have like a camping chair. I don't have a rigid chair. So we want to do it right. So we're going to get the proper things out and kind of test some different things. In the meantime though, the roof rack is already in place. I'm hoping it's at a good distance. It seemed to be from the measurements, but the measurements versus the holes could be a different story. I'm not sure. Keys are going on a magnet and being put right here so we don't lose them because I definitely need those. And I went ahead and pulled out these items so I could check them. I like the fact that they come all together like this. It just makes it a little bit easier. And there are in fact four of each of these components. And then there are eight of these little knobs to make it easier. Now the way that this will work is like this. So this bracket will actually go under the bar. This will go inside of the unit and then these will be inside also so we'll tighten all of this down and then because this is inside and this is outside it'll basically crunch it together like a little burger and that's what holds it in place looking at the instructions that it said that we should set the cross rails at 24 inches on center i just happen to have a tape measure so let's see how far apart mine are Ooh, that's further Okay, this is, this is further. This could be problematic. Let's take this over to the box now and see if this is gonna work. If not, I may have to get an additional crossbar system. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit of a problem, I think. Okay, so we're gonna have to look at this a little bit differently. Okay guys, I did some uh, measuring and also some looking up here and there's a couple things that we're running into. The first of which is, it is much further than 24 inches from bar to bar. Now on my van, the bar placement is kind of a little bit different than some SUVs that I've seen where they're more equidistance. This one actually has a longer distance between the first and the second one than the second and the third one. So I have a couple of options here. Number one, I drill holes in the roof box, which I could do. It says that you can do that. However, if I do that, I'm gonna be drilling holes in a part of the roof box that doesn't have pre-drilled spots. So it's gonna be a little bit of a question mark and that makes me a little nervous. Or number two, I could take my front rail off and move it to the back. And if I do that, I could have it at that 24 inch difference, which actually works for the existing roof box and wouldn't be that big of a deal. So those are kind of my question marks at this moment. Now, there's a couple of other things. I am gonna eventually have to take down my awning, not because I don't like it, but because I need to shift it to the other side. For the time being, I only have two rails, but I really need three rails if I'm gonna do this design that I'm talking about. So I may just go ahead and take the awning off altogether and then move the rail back that's in the front and just have the roof box for the time being and then worry about the awning at a little bit different time, especially since I'm gonna be taking the car stool with me. I don't really need the extra shade at this moment however I do want to put that back on so I'm gonna to have to get a rail sooner or later anyway now the next issue I have is am I gonna be able to do this today I don't know um, realistically this is going to be a bigger job than I thought it was gonna be and I already thought it was gonna be kind of hard but I may be able to do this tomorrow a little bit better so I don't know. I don't know what to do guys. I'm not sure yet. Let me think on this a little bit longer. Now it's kind of hard for you guys to see this, but I marked with a Sharpie where I'd have to drill the first hole and then the next one would be like right here. So again, that's not going to be in these pre-drilled. So that means it's going to be a lot more when it comes to the drilling. And I don't know if that's the smartest idea. So I think moving the rail is actually going to be my best bet and I kind of measured it. And if it does go off of the 24 inches, this and those holes right over here are actually 24 inches apart. So I don't think this would hang off the back or anything. Of course, my main concern with doing this project was that I didn't want it to sit so far back that it was hanging off. And so by measuring it, I think that I debunked that that was actually going to happen, I think. We'll see. In the meantime, yes, I realize the roof is extremely dirty and I'm probably going to give it a good once over before I get the roof box actually mounted. We shall see though, because ugh, it's just grimy. Okay, from here to here. Yeah, that's gonna work. 
Okay, so it's a lot closer and I may have to still drill like one hole, but it's not gonna be in the part of the roof box that's not already equipped for a hole. So we are definitely gonna be moving the roof bars. I don't think I'm gonna do that tonight. I'm gonna lose sun before I have a chance to get that finished, I think. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is I am going to put the roof box in a safe place and then I'm gonna cool off because it's still pretty warm here. And even though the breeze is blowing now, it's still pretty warm here. Okay guys, I'm gonna put it in here for the night and then we'll come back to it tomorrow. Okay guys, it's the next day and it's time for us to attempt to do this. I don't know how this is gonna work. I am probably gonna struggle a little bit. I'm gonna have a big learning curve today. <sighs> Nothing ever goes easy with van life. That's one of the things that I have learned. If you wanna make a small change, sometimes you gotta go through it to get to it, and that is what is definitely happening with this project. Oh, <sighs> Time to get some tools out. In fact, I'm probably going to need this guy right here because I have a socket set in here. And um, well, yeah, we'll get some use out of this toolkit finally. Now, I don't know what size I will need, but everything is in here. So let's see. Okay, this guy right here, I think is what we need. Ugh. Yeah, so it has uh, both standard and metric on here. Got my ladder out and um, up we go. Up, up we go. Now, um, it's it's never fun for me whenever we have to get on top because, well, yeah. I'm not afraid of heights or anything, but you know, it's an awkward angle to work on something like this, even with a good ladder. So um, let's do this. I might also need some wrenches. I'm gonna go back down. Got them. Now we can figure this out. Okay guys, I found the right one and we're just gonna loosen these off first. Now, sure, you can tell this is going to be a process, so I'm going to finish loosening these, and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay, guys, four of these have come off, and I took down the awning. I'm going to go ahead and secure these to the back of the awning so I don't lose them, but wow, that wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. And I'm just going to lightly twist these on so that I don't lose them. Two more and then I'll be finished with this part. Now comes the potential harder part, which is gonna be taking this rail off and moving it to the back. Now, notice this has a little hanger here for the awning. I'm just gonna leave those on for the time being, I think, and just try to move it as a unit because otherwise I have to take apart like three other things and I'm not trying to do that today. I'm just trying to make this as efficient as I can. We can deal with that later. Back up the ladder we go again. Whoa. Yep. Okay, this is what we're looking at. Other than the fact that the roof is dirty and the rail is super dirty, I need to be able to maneuver in here to get this off. The good thing is it looks like it's the same size. So I just have to figure out if it turns in the same direction or if it needs to go in this direction. I think on this one, it is a true lefty Lucy. The other one was backwards. So I'll, I'll be back in a minute after I finish this guys. Okay, I just got it undone and then it just lifts right up and then there's this flange that goes on the bottom. For those of you who've asked me, this is my van and truck cargo system. It's my Vantech. I just picked it up through Vantech.us and they also have some links on Amazon. Now each rig is a little different so I don't want to add a link to this because unless you have an NV, you may need a different model. So just look up Vantech.us. Of course, now that I have that all undone, I need to take the bar off and I'm going to try to clean it because it's really nasty. Now to do this, I am just taking a damp sponge with kind of a gritty side to it and just rubbing it down really good. I'm also probably gonna take this out to the van and try to rub the top of the van to clean it up just a little bit because, ugh, bugs, gross bugs. It's not perfect, but it's way better than it was. So I'm happy with this. Okay, I've just been kind of scrubbing over this and just loosening things. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but I'm not gonna spray it with water yet because I still have some open holes but this should get all of the grossness where it will come off whenever I do spray it. And I'll do that in just a few minutes after I get the roof rack attached before I put the box on. Okay, next up, I need to take these little tabs out 
and this is using just a Phillips head screwdriver. And this is what it looks like after I put it back into this front one. So that is good to go. Now there is an entire video of installing the roof rack and then also the awning on my channel. So if you wanna see this a little bit closer, you can go check out that video. Whew. It's getting warm again today. I had a nice breeze earlier, but it's going away. So we're gonna have to work fast. So I'm gonna go do this other one. I'll be right back. Again, guys, I have some scrubbing to do, but I went ahead and took the gasket and I'm putting it on top of the hole. Then we'll be putting this on top of that. And then we'll be pushing everything down and making sure it's all even. And then we will be bolting it back down. As you can see, the bars are both secured now, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring the water hose over here, see if we can't get some of this grime off, and then um, we'll move to the roof box. I'm also gonna go ahead and put my tools up because I don't wanna lose them, and uh, this was super handy. I ended up using two items, that was it. I thought I was gonna have to use a third, but only two. Not perfect, but way better. I'm gonna let it dry, and then we'll move on. Okay guys, it's several hours later and I'm finally gonna try to tackle this again. It was just so hot, but it's cooled off a little bit. So let's see if we can make this work. Of course, first we have to get it back out and um, get started on this. Okay, before we do get started though, I wanted to say that these instructions are a little interesting because it says to make sure that the locking device is put into place, but then it doesn't tell you to actually secure the arm bars. And I don't think that's what they actually call them, but this is what I'm calling an arm bar. In fact, that doesn't pop up until step five, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm kind of confused because it definitely says I'm supposed to put it together before I actually put it on top. But if I do it this way, it's going to be on top before I connect the arm bars, which is going to make it much harder. So I'm kind of a little bit confused by the instructions here, but I know basically what I have to do at this point. And um, I think I am going to have to drill a hole. So <laughs> let's get up on the uh, top again and measure one more time now that we have the bars in place. Up we go with the tape measure. Okay, so if I put it there and then bring it across, it's showing that from side to side it's about 26 inches. Remember it said 24 inches? Well, we're going to have to put a hole in this to make it work correctly, I think. Which is fine, because there's a drill hole for it, so it shouldn't be too bad. But before we do that, I'm actually going to try to line up the bottom piece up here just to make sure it is necessary, because I would rather measure multiple times and, and then make a hole rather than making a hole and then realizing I, I didn't need one. So, out this thing comes. Oh, the work I create for myself, guys. Okay, again, just looking at it, see, it has these two holes already, but it has a couple of spaces where I could actually go so it'll be a little bit longer. So what I think I'm gonna do is measure this also, and the middle of it would be like the middle of the bar. So we'll measure these two to these two, and then we'll also measure for like these two, I think, to those two to see if I could just manage to, you know, only drill maybe one hole or if tops two holes. Okay, so if I go from the middle of this one to the middle of this one, it's 24 inches. So if I were to go back one, I could make it where this could possibly work out but I'm not sure. So this, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, I've put it on top and now I'm gonna crawl up to see if it will fit. I'm gonna take a couple of the brackets just to kind of test it. Now in a perfect world, this will just fit and I will be so happy. But again, we haven't been living in a perfect world with this project. Of course, in order to test this, we have to take these apart. Okay, that one is kind of in place. I just stuck it through the bottom. Let's try the other one. It's, it's not wanting to go unless we drill, but I'm also noticing something else. Um, this could be a challenge. So I was able to secure this one and I wanted to secure one so I could see how far off the other one would be. It looks as though the rail comes right into the smack middle of this one. So we're going to have to drill two holes on this on both sides. Okay, so down we go again, down we go. Okay, so these two holes right here, these are the ones that we need to drill. So I'm gonna go get a drill and I'll be right on this. Okay, this is why we do things at base camp. I have no idea how this is gonna work out. I just know that I need to open this up a bit 
so that I can use this drill bit. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, but yeah, I don't have enough room in my van to carry larger items like this. So whenever I come to base camp, my dad has them and then I can use them. And hopefully <laughs> we shall see, we will use them correctly. Now this is a larger drill than I have used previous. So I know the mechanics of it, but oh, I'm not sure how this is gonna work still. And lucky for me, I have several of these plugs around the yard because my dad likes Christmas a lot. And it also comes in handy when I need to do projects. Now, um, I think it's going the right way. So we're gonna try this out on, uh, on this hole. Let's try it on this hole first. It worked guys, it worked. Okay, all four holes have now been drilled and now we can put it back on the top again. Or should I connect the top piece to it first? I don't know, um, that's step five. Let's consult the instructions again. And I just scratched myself because I got bit by a mosquito. So we're gonna try to do this quickly because the mosquitoes are coming out to play. And if you've never been to Texas, they're like the size of hummingbirds. They're big, they're scary. And they make me puff up and, and do this. So let's hurry. We are supposed to attach the top. Number six, we are supposed to attach the brackets. So this does make sense. I don't know why it wanted us to put the thing together earlier without attaching these though. I, I'm confused still. It definitely told us to line up the locks. Maybe that was just to check the locks to make sure they're working. No idea, but we are definitely gonna put this thing together and then it should be very interesting having to lift this by myself. I probably should have said this a long time ago, but uh, don't try this at home, kids. Don't try this at home. Okay, so this technically is the bottom, so I need to probably um, flip it. Okay, so the bottom piece is now laying down. I'm gonna push those back in, and then we're gonna lay the top piece on top of it somehow. I, I don't know how this part's gonna work. I am sweating, and I'm just gonna be very honest. This is not super easy to put together by yourself. <laughs> it's just not. I'm trying to get the crossbars that are laying down onto their correct mounted position like it tells me to. However, in doing that, it is very difficult to do that. And I think you can hear the frustration. So, I've been working on this for about 20 minutes and I have still not succeeded. That is very frustrating for a person like myself who is super girl oriented. I always show the ugly stuff. Well, guess what? I just yelled at this thing because sometimes you just gotta yell. Sometimes you just gotta yell it out. We're not gonna quit though. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna take a deep breath. And um, you know, I told you it was a cooler day, but sometimes things just don't work out how you want them to. And it's so frustrating. Okay, so realistically, both of the sides attach. However, on the diagram, it only shows one side at a time and that's what holds it open. So I now know that it will hold open. So the question is, do I need to install it like this or do I need to put the bottom on and tighten it down first and then put this on? I don't know, I really do not. The instructions are a bit vague and there are no videos for this particular car carrier. So it's, it's kind of a, up in the air moment. But some of the others did say that you click them into place as you're using them. So that would make sense. Okay, so as you can see, it is on the top of the van now. I did have a little bit of help from my mom and that was just so we could stabilize it. Now, again, the instructions are a little bit vague when it comes to this. And so it says that we're supposed to put it up here. And then after we put it up here, we'll open it up from one side, we'll bolt it down, then we'll open it up from the other side and we'll bolt it down. <sighs> this has been a wild ride. And um, even though I'm super excited about this, I'll be even more excited whenever it's done because this has been one of those things that has tested me. You know, not all roof boxes are going to be difficult. Not all situations are gonna be hard, but the complexity of the height of my van, the bars that had to be moved, and then the vagueness of the instructions have made this a journey, let me tell you. <laughs> but we're almost done, and all we have to do now is just bolt everything down, and then we're finished. Okay, guys, it is actually installed. You can see the brackets below are all secured. 
I have officially locked and unlocked it using the key. I learned that it goes in in one direction and then whenever it's unlocked, they'll come down like this and then you just lock it back up and it secures tightly up in this area. So it is installed. Now I will be testing it going down the road, of course, before I take off from base camp or before loading it with anything. So I'm probably gonna do just like a little test drive in just a few minutes, but thank goodness it's done. Now there is a little hatch on the front also that you secure before going down the road. And whenever we open this up, we're going to open up one side at a time and use those props. And that's basically what we're supposed to do. I hope that this video is helpful to you guys. If you are contending with a roof box and aren't familiar with the process, I hope it's also kind of putting something out there in the universe as to this particular roof box. I was so frustrated by the lack of resources, but at the same time, after I kind of figured out that the instructions were just a little bit too vague in some areas, I was able to take those and compare it to other roof boxes and make some really easy choices and decisions. Now, if you're not a person who can get on and off ladders and you have a taller vehicle, I wouldn't probably try to install this by myself. It does require some very interesting reaching, grabbing, and moving. So, have somebody to help you or if someone in your area does installations it might be worth just investing in a couple of uh, extra dollars to get it installed for you because um, you know I had some advantage here I had the tools that I needed because I have dad's drills and things like that I also had the tools that were in my safety kit but a lot of people don't have those but do need some access to this now there's a couple other things I'm gonna have to pick up before I can hit the road including a uh, ladder of some kind because I didn't have an opportunity to install a ladder on my van before leaving so I'm gonna have to address that with a portable ladder which is fine I'm super excited about this and then of course I'm gonna have to fill up the roof box with all the goodies that I'm planning on taking with me on my next adventure. But if you have enjoyed coming along with me on this crazy ride to um, install my very first roof box, please leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. And remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And being able to take all of our adventure gear with us is definitely going to be that. Till next time guys, bye.